Hello, this is Mike with Beyond 20, and today I've got an item for you from version 10.02 of Sharewell using an out-of-the-box czar or demo czar. This is an issue we came across when looking at the change request object um, from its base functionality. What you'll see on the screen here is a new change request, and most of the times there's an out-of-the-box change type, and I'm going to show you the table here in a second. Um, let's do that now, actually, before we jump back to show you what the issue we found is. When we get to the table management, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the change status table. Um, in the change status table, once we get this up here, this will, you'll be familiar with if you're using Sharewell, will have a list of breakdown of your statuses for your different change types. Now out of the box there's the emergency, normal, and standard, which will probably work for most people. However, in some cases you're going to want to change your statuses around to introduce new workflows that fit your company's structure. So as you can see I want to point out that in 10.02 they've changed the status for the initial status from new to draft. Now I don't know if this is in previous versions, but this is something we noticed in 10.02. Now I've gone ahead and I've introduced a new status type called minor with a status of new in the first position. And this is going to be key in our demonstration here in another few seconds. So we've got a change type with a status of new. So if we go back to our change request and we try and change that type, we get a validation pop-up box asking us to validate our status. Now you'll notice we only have the option of new because that's the only one we have in the list from the change status table. However, the value that it's looking for is draft. And so no matter what you do, um, if you add new ones, it's not going to, it's going to continually pop up that one there. And I'm going to show you here in a second the reason that that is occurring. So what we need to do is we need to jump over to the administrator client and we're going to create a new blueprint. Now then we're going to take a look at the change request object. Now, if you'll notice there, the reason we came across that issue is when we changed the status field. So we're going to scroll down here to the status field. And let's take a look here at the status field. You notice that it's got an autofill on it. Um, and that was when we changed the change type. So let's take a look into that status field and we'll see what the validation is. And we see that it is validating with a limit value of change type. And when the limiting value changes, clear the field's value. So this is our key to let us know that's why it was prompting us to change the status uh, in there because it was running into a validation issue. So look, let's look further down here under auto populate. Under auto populate, you can see that when the change type changes, it tries to change with an expression change status status. So if we take a look at this custom expression, now this tells us right away that it's pulling a field from a relationship. Now it doesn't tell us which one it's pulling from because we can't identify it uh, through like the modifiers or anything like that. So if we go in and we look, you will see that there are several relationships on change status. Now we have one here for change request links change status and then we have change status uh, links to status and then we have a new one that says change request links initial status. Now this is the one that got us to thinking and we looked into it and this is supposed to be the initial status for the object. So let's take a look at that relationship here and see what it looks like here. So let's go into the admin client. <clears throat> let's go to the relationship. 
and we're not going to make any changes here. So inside initial status, we're going to edit the relationship. And it's looking at the change type because it's a constraint where the change status change type matches. So if you remember from our example, there was only one status under minor and that was new. And the change status initial status equals true. Now, if we jump back to our change status table, if I get to the right screen here, you'll notice that I have the initial status as true, because it's illogical. However, when I changed the change type, it didn't actually switch to that status. And the reason for that is, is if we look here at the advanced, the load immediately and reload relationships when constraints field change was not checked. So that means if we look at the record through system analyzer, we shall find that the relationship, if we can get it to load the Let's set the oh, wrong window. That's fine. <laughs> All right, let's run the system analyzer under the correct window. Initial status. It's referencing the status type of standard with the status of draft. Now, if you remember from the validation window, it was looking for the value draft. And that is because it was trying to use this value in that expression when the change type was changed. Well, we need to make sure that it updates that relationship with the new value of the new change type we set it to. So this right here needs to be fixed. So I just want to show you, I've already created a blueprint. So we're going to open a blueprint that I've already created that has those two fixes in it. And we're going to publish that blueprint here. And I'm not going to scan for errors, but please make sure you scan for errors. If it's something that you're testing out for the first time within Cheryl, always make sure that you're scanning for errors. That's very important. I'm just doing this so we can speed up the process of getting this in so we can see what it looks like. All right, so now that we've got it in here, let's go ahead and back to our management client. And I'm just gonna close out these extra windows and we're gonna reload our definitions. And then once this comes back up after reloading, we're gonna create a new change request. And with nothing else changing in the change status table, when we go to change it to a different change type, you should see that it changes the, the type correctly and it loads the status correctly because that's the important part. So you'll notice the status up here says draft and then we have the next status. So let's go ahead and change it to minor. And so now the new status is new and you'll notice the next status is blank because we haven't defined a next status after new, which is fine. And if you're curious why the field or the tab went away, it's because we haven't defined in the form arrangement the tab uh, to show for the change type because that's another change in 1002 to be aware of is that based on your change type your forms will display differently so hopefully that was engaging and hopefully that was educational and i hope you watch more of our videos for more of our content thank you